Are the videos ready? Yeah. So we have here first Dr. Ragni Parikh from Mumbai, a senior um, cataract surgeon, who will talk to us on when primary surgery fails in cataract surgery, what next? Welcome, Dr. Ragni Parikh. Good morning, sir. Um, I thank the Kerala Society for inviting us to this Golden Jubilee Conference. Good morning, uh, Chairman on the dais, and good morning, friends. So you always have to have a plan B in life uh, because sometimes, you know, even the simplest of cases may not go well and you need to have a backup. So mishaps can happen while doing mature cataracts, black cataract, posterior polar cataract. So what is the age of the cataract, whether there is any history of trauma, you should know all this. So this is a video where you can see the pupil is very well dilated. This is the capsule which is stained with a dye because it is a white mature cataract. You are doing a good capsulotomy and as we all know that a good CCC is a prerequisite to a good FACO. Everything is good, you are doing a good FACO emulsification, there is a small amount of stress in the surgeon while doing this type of cataract because you are always thinking that oh this is a white cataract and whether I'll be able to do it properly but with a good machine it can be done. So here you see you are uh, almost doing a good job. This is the last piece of nucleus that you are aspirating and uh, you are good. What remains now is the cortex. What we use for cortex removal is the AC maintainer and the single port aspiration cannula. So it is all looking very good. There is 360 degrees of cortex removal. You are almost done over here and you feel you are very safe. You managed a very hard cataract. And can you just see what has happened while removing this cortex through the 12 o'clock? The posterior edge of the cannula has touched the PC and there is a PC rent. So even when you think that things are going well, this can happen. So what do you do? This is the plan B. There is no vitreous loss, but you can convert this flap into a posterior CCC with the specifically designed forceps. Now here there is no vitreous, so vitrectomy need not be done. This is a central PCC and for surgeons who are used to doing a PCC, this is very good in a pediatric cataract. This is a well dilated pupil and a hard brown cataract. You are doing phaco emulsification after a central capsulorexis. So it is hard, you can do a good phaco. You are doing a good phaco and most of the pieces are removed. And what remains here is the cortex. Again, this is a very good device to do cortex aspiration. This is a single port cannula and the AC maintainer. You polish the posterior capsule, which is very good. You put in the lens. You are very happy that you are doing a good job. And you are almost home because what is now required is just hydration. But please note what has happened while putting the posterior chamber IOL, sometimes one of the haptics or the stretch of the bag. So let's recap while putting this IOL, you have done nothing wrong, but sometimes these type of situations do occur. The delivery was smooth. There is a oblong pear shaped PC tear, but there is no vitreous. Everything is good. So not necessary that you have to go and mess around every time. You can leave this alone if there is no vitreous. This is the third patient where you are starting phaco emulsification. It's a corneal tunnel. You are doing phaco emulsification. Please don't go into the periphery. This can lead into complications. As you can see over here, the chamber is very, very unstable. Normally in this type of phaco machine, the chamber has to be very stable. Now while doing something with the chopper, can you see the leak from the sleeve? The leak from the seal a uh, sleeve is causing the unstable chamber and hence the PCR. You need to know uh, anterior vitrectomy and that also an automated one. So plan B is here. First do an automated vitrectomy. There is a huge nucleus piece and it is better to convert this into SICS. Either the main incision can be closed or you can do it through the same incision. Put in an IOL and then you have to suture this wound. You have to be very, very careful while putting the IOL. Here, actually, we should have gone with a three-piece IOL. So the lesson to be learned over here is that you should have a three-piece IOL in 
also in the OT in case of such occurrences because you may not be able to put this lens. But if there is a bag available, then you can put this in the bag carefully without uh, causing any problem. You can see these are some few vitreous stands. So always check the sleeve and the needle and the standby lens. Now this is a posterior polar cataract. Now even before you beginning, begin this case, you know that there is going to be probably a PC defect. And when you are doing cortex removal through the main incision, there is shallowing and there is some amount of giveaway which could have been prevented. So as the cortex is clean, you can see the vitreous. So anterior vitrectomy, now these type of patients, even without messing up, there could be a PC tear. So the plan B should be always ready in a PPC that you have to have a vitrectomy standby because though whatever you see on slit lamp also may not be what you see on the table and there will be a defect uh, in such type of patients. So you need to have a vitrectomy standby and not to enter via the main port while doing cortex removal. This appears to be a very soft cataract and uh, you are trying to divide the first division but the, the phaco piece does not have any hold, the phaco probe does not have any hold over the nucleus. There is no movement, you are not able to divide. So sometimes what you have to do is what we will see now. You are not able to fake or whatever you do, you are not able. So maybe the power is not right. But here, this is the nuclear salute. You are trying to chop. But whenever you, such a situation occurs, I would suggest that wait, put in visco, assess the situation and then go back in. The nucleus, there is no followability of this nucleus. And hence, you need to step back. This is edited, but you saw that we came out, we waited and we did uh, what was to be done. The pupil is fully, fully dilated. You can lift the nucleus completely as you can see over here and then chop it. The pupil constricts because of your uh, handling. So be very careful that nothing is going on behind the pupil. The nucleus is lifted up completely. So in many cases, you know, your finesse goes for a toss. You may not be able to do a stop and chop and everything like that. And Sometimes be careful while lifting with a chopper. You can lift it with a dialer because a sharp chopper may cut through the PC. But you may have to change even your technique of phaco emulsification to give good results. All the time remembering that uh, use of viscoelastic to protect the cornea, keeping the patient in mind first, keep a plan B always ready uh, and a standby surgeon. And if everything fails, leave it so that the patient gets the best results. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to present. Thank you, Dr. Ragni Parekh for the exchange of knowledge.